Okay, so uh, this is Mishle 13.9, Or Sadikim Yismach V'Nir Roshayim Yidach. Uh, anyone want to try translating that? Very simple. Or not simple, but semantically. Um, the light of Sadikim gladdens. Okay, so 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 it's weird, right? Uh, so I think y gladdens would be Yismach. So yismach is rejoices, like meaning not that they cause others. Like gladdens means like it makes other people happy. So this is the light of tzaddikim. Uh, which they will the, rejoice. Yeah, rejoices. V'ner rishayim yidach. And the flame of the of wicked. Flame yeah, of, yeah. I wouldn't translate it as flame. Light. <laughs> I wouldn't translate uh, it as light either. Candle. Candle. Yeah, either candle or a lamp. Uh, let's go with candle. Um, of the wicked of the Rashaim, uh, yeah. I guess it goes out. I see it there. Yeah, we'll go we'll out. Go out. Yeah, we'll see a couple other options for that in a little, little while. Does, yeah. Is it? Is it? Will it go out, or will it make them go out? Uh, it will go out. Okay. We'll go out, yeah. Um. Okay. So we have here. Matus Tzion says, Yidach inyan nitur ukfitsa. So I'm not exactly sure what nitur means. Um, uh, like, I, I don't know if it comes from like the word as like, you know, same word as like mutar or matir, like it'll be released. Uh, kfitsa is to leap. Vzehu kiboy haner. So he explains though, he says, this is the the uh, the extinguishing of the candle. Ki ha shall have it. Woo. Shout out to shall have it. Kofetas meapsila v'chidach so he says that the um, shalhevet means flame. The shalhevet leaps from the wick, uh, and uh, and that mean, that's how it goes out. So he learns it as um, uh, flickers out. I think is probably the best way to say it in English. Like it's or sputters out, it's flickers out or sputters out. Let's let's say hold on a second. Go or flicker or sputter um, uh, out. Yeah. Okay. So that is him. All right, Mitsu, uh, Sadigon says, um, or hatsadikim holech umitosef. So he says, the the light of the tzadikim continually grows brighter. Okay, I'm gonna ignore this whole uh little uh thing here as well. Uh, we'll just um, uh, that's just a little bit of, uh, of an elaboration and kind of give it a little bit away. So I'm gonna skip that. Okay, uh, so the um, so I'm going to skip the Targum for a strategic reason, okay? Um, and we have here, our score says the light of the, right, the, the righteous will rejoice. Um, but yeah, I said will rejoice is probably better. Will rejoice. Um, but the lamp of the wicked shall die out. Okay, fine. I don't know why they say die. That's a little weird. All right, all Torah, uh, which um, I don't have my refresh on me right now. So it says the light of the righteous shines brightly. But the lamp of the wicked is snuffed out. Okay, so take note of shines brightly. Okay, uh, snuffed out. Um, uh, that's another one, similar one here. Now, Alter says like this: the light of the righteous shines, but the lamp of the wicked gutters. Okay, now uh, I've I've alluded to this in our Monday night here for a little while, but I uh, I gave a, a public apology uh, uh, to Alter um, in my morning message here. So I think I'm going to do that now. Okay, so Alter in his um, Commentary here says, again, just for, to review for people who are unaware, Robert Alter is a modern academic secular uh, translator who is a very talented translator, but because he's secular, um, will sometimes, or, you know, yeah, maybe more more often than sometimes, will, um, will say things or take stances that really are not really in line with the Orthodox Judaism. So here's an example of what I would have said, okay? So he says, shines the translation reads this translation reads uh yizrach okay now our says yismach um so his says uh, so he says this translation reads yizrach shines instead of the masoretic yismach rejoices because light rejoicing doesn't make much sense okay uh others claim that yismach has a secondary sense of shine now we've seen all to do this a lot where he basically just says well this doesn't make sense so we're going to change it okay so i used to just think uh, that he's just being very, very cavalier with with the what we call the Masoretic text. Now, the Masoretic text, as it implies, is the text based on the Masora. Now, but what does it mean specifically? So I have this uh, Wikipedia uh, entry here. I, I never exactly knew how to pronounce this, the Masoretes. 
I think, were a group of, uh, I'll just read it here, the Masoretes uh, uh, or Bali Masora, literally masters of the tradition, were groups of Jewish scribe scholars who worked from around the end of the 5th through the 10th century CE, uh, based primarily in medieval Palestine, in the cities of Tiberias and Jerusalem, as well as in Iraq, Babylonia. Each group compiled a system of pronunciation and grammatical guides in the, oopsies, in the form of, I just knocked my mouse, in the form of diacritical notes, nikud, uh, those little dots, on the external form of the biblical text in an attempt to standardize the pronunciation paragraph and verse divisions uh, and cantillation of the Hebrew Bible. Uh, this is not for wor the worldwide Jewish community. So basically what they were doing was they were the critical editors of the text of Tanakh. So, and what they did was, you know, there were, um, there were, uh, you know, even though we are very good at keeping, you know, the written, the, you know, the, the, the text of the written uh, Torah, like intact, human error creeps in and there are differences. And, um, and basically like what these, what this group of people did over these hundreds of years is they, they standardize everything. Okay. Now um, there are, Whenever Robert Alter talks about the Masoretic text, he's referring to the text that we Orthodox Jews rely on for our, you know, our Torah scrolls and for our uh, halacha. Okay, and the reason why I objected to what Alter does is because I assumed he was just kind of modifying things whenever he wanted to, and he would often use the non-Masoretic text. So, for example, the Samaritans, which was a breakoff group from the Jews. Uh, or ancient Israelites had their have their own Torah. The Septuagint was the Greek Torah. Um, uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls is another version, and all these things have little minor uh, or sometimes major differences, and sometimes it's you know complete word differences. So my change in perspective came from a chapter in a book that I read. Uh, uh, I didn't read the whole book yet, but it's by Amnon Bazak, called An uh, Ad Hayom Hazeh. Uh, it's an English book. Uh, published by, uh, no, hold on just a second. That was by Magid. Just a second. No, you know what? All right, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll I can include in the show notes. So he basically goes over a um, uh, a, a history of the editing of the Tanakh text, and basically what I've realized is that first of all, there were a lot more differences than I thought. And that I didn't know that the Masoretes did their work that late in the um, in like that late in the fifth or tenth centuries. I thought they were much earlier. Um, and basically, what he establishes is that even though Orthodox Jews rely on the Masoretic text for halakhic purposes or for you know for our official Torah scrolls, there are different. There were different um, versions uh, that were floating around that might have been authentic. And basically what the Masoretes did is they they went by the majority. So it's entirely possible that the other texts that Alter is relying on are legitimate in terms of their authenticity, even if they're not authoritative in terms of what we rely on for halakha. Okay. And practically speaking, what this means for us is that we should factor in uh, to account whenever he is relying on other um translations, especially if those translations are corroborated by other texts. So for example, the Targum, uh, which is the Aramaic translation of, of you know, of, of Ksuvim, of the writings, also says, Nuhare de Tzadike Nirvaz, and Nirvaz means shines, it does not mean rejoice. So the, the I still have a bone to pick with Alter, where he basically is just very quick to dismiss things, just because they don't make sense to him. And I think that that's a bad habit, because I think that you know, we've seen in Mishlei, there are many things that don't make sense to us in the very beginning. Um, and uh, and when we look into it, then it does make a lot of sense. Uh, so I think he is still too quick to dismiss things. But I I thought that basically the moves that he were, was doing were completely illegitimate in the eyes of uh, of like Orthodox Jewish scholarship. And I realize now that they're not, even though they uh, even though they don't accord with like the uh, the text that we embrace halakhically. OK, so so this is my like, uh, you know. We, we'll, we'll back off a little bit and accept his uh, things a little bit more. And in this case, we will accept it because you see that the Targum does uh, say that this is, um, uh, you know, this is a legitimate reading. So basically the, the, the upshot here is that there are two translations we have for the first half. The light of the Tzadikim will rejoice or will shine, but the candle of the Rishayim will go out or flicker out or sputter out. Okay. Any questions on that? That's just a methodology thing I wanted to state once for the record, um, even though it'll come up a lot in the future. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move these now. 
Um, okay. I'm just going to move these over here. Oh, yeah, Isaiah? Um, in this case, are you saying that Alter's thing is like maybe grounded, or do you think that he's being a little? Yeah, I'm saying like... that he it's it's it, it is maybe grounded because, and I'm I'm getting that from the fact that the Targum says what he says. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, got yeah. it. Yeah, um, and I'm going to be much more quick to endorse his translations if they're reflected in the classical sources than if he just says, "Oh, this doesn't make sense." And also, you'll see sometimes he'll say it doesn't make sense, and then he'll quote another specific manuscript that has it uh but sometimes he'll just say it doesn't make sense and then he'll make something up you know uh and i think that that's that still i think is very like sketchy um okay so uh do we have oh yeah i also added here sadigon says um uh that uh it means the light of the team will increase okay those are three translations for that okay okay questions and problems so this is a fairly straightforward puzzle to read even though we got a couple uh translations here what are the questions? Yeah, Rivki. Well, one is, what's the difference between or and ner? Okay, what is the difference uh, between or, light, and ner, candle? Okay, good. Yeah. Dad? What does he mean by the light of the tzaddikim? What does it mean by the light of the tzaddikim? And conversely, uh, and the uh, the candle of the of the wicked, Rishayim. Yeah, okay. Basic questions. Yeah, Isaiah. I think it's weird that for like or tzaddikim yismach that the light makes the tzaddikim that it's the one it causes the the tzaddikim to rejoice. Like light is usually something that does things for other people. So why is it like going in on themselves? Okay, no, right. Like, so you're saying shines and illuminates things for others. Okay, right. But so ju just to make sure that you're clear. On, I'm clear on the premise of the of the question here. The the translation is the light itself will rejoice, not will make them rejoice. Oh, I thought you're saying it makes the tzaddikim rejoice. No, okay. Now that's how you translated it initially, and I was saying I think that would be yisamach. I think I don't I really see. think it so well, but yismach means it itself is happy or is rejo is joyous. So you can ask that that question, obviously, right? What does it mean? For the light of the tzaddikim uh, to yismach, okay. If yismach means rejoice, okay. Obviously, this is not a question, and this is probably why. I mean, this is definitely why Alter said shine is better. First of all, because shine is something that light does. Light doesn't really rejoice, and also because shine is kind of the opposite of going out. Um, or sadigon saying increase instead of sputtering out. You know, rejoice is going to be the more difficult one here. Yeah, Rifki. Um, sorry. I'm, I'm just thinking, hold on, I should go back to my train of thought because I was writing. Um, or I guess I was thinking like, what is the decision-making aspect here? Like, it doesn't yeah. seem like we're doing anything besides existing. Okay, right. Okay. So what here, we definitely have to ask, what is the practical application? Yeah, mom. There seems to be some kind of continuity issue uh the light of Sadiqim will shine increase but the candle will flicker sputter it's like a this you know it's a it's a verb that why does if it just went out that would, that would be the same as shining or increasing but i, I don't know i can't explain but what the flicker and the sputter that means it, it is it having a hard time going out is it Okay, Has so do, I don't know how to explain that. Application of flickering or sputtering out. Okay, yeah. Instead okay. of just being extinguished. Yeah. Uh, instead of just being extinguished. Okay, Ariel. Yeah. W what's going on over here? Can you be more specific? Yeah. What's the subject of this puzzle? Okay. Exactly. Like, like Here's the subject. Know. Of this pasuk, it's like who do we? I mean, what do we care about? Candles, like 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 candles, light, like what? what who, yeah. So what, let let's also ask that as a question, uh, which is, um, I guess, whatever point the pasuk, uh, is making, what is gained by expressing? Oops, sorry, by expressing it, allegorically, or metaphorically, I guess, uh, yeah. 
Okay, Tamar? Yeah, I, I was actually just going to ask, like, what is the what is the mushal here? And and also, I guess, like, is it definitely a mushal? Like, could it somehow be talking okay, about right. white? Yeah. Yeah, right. What? Okay, so is this a mushal, okay, metaphor um, at all? Okay, and if so, what is the nimshal? Okay, and nimshal means the... Uh, uh, that which the metaphor stands for. I still, there's probably a good English word for, for, for Nimshal, but I, I haven't yet found it. Oh, hold on a second. I got to open the chat. Uh, also, not, not that it really matters uh, because people are, are pretty good at raising their hands. I'm not using my second monitor tonight. So like uh, if you raise your hand, just make sure you actually like do the hand raise feature instead of just raising your physical hand. Okay, uh, Isaiah. Okay, so um, maybe this is sort of re-asking other questions in a different way. But so I feel like um the terms or and nair are being used to like recast some something specific in a different light. Um, that's kind of a pun, but like <laughs> like there's some there's one specific thing that it's referring to. Like they both have this 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 facet of themselves, yeah. but it's calling it an or by the tzaddikim and a oh, nair by the rishonim. Okay. So let's let's ask that as a question first of all. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> um. So is um. Sorry, I guess are the terms or and nair referring to the same phenomenon? Uh. But but the puzzle is calling it by different names. Uh. For the tzaddikim, and versus the rishaim. Okay. Um. Or that's not a pun. Uh, um, uh, do the do only? I guess do only the tadikim uh, have this or, and only the rishayim have this nair. And okay. yeah, and also like if it is the first way, so then why is the Pasuk doing that and not okay. explicitly stating what it's talking about. Okay, if it's the first way, why is the Pasuk doing that? Yeah. Um, I had another version of this question also that I wanted to tack on, which is um okay, and if these are referring to two different phenomena that are each possessed, uh possessed by both groups, then what about the nair of the tzaddikim and the or of the rishayim, right? That's another possibility, which is that that both of them have a nair and an or, uh, but the puzzle is only telling us what happens to the or of the tzaddik and is only telling us what happens to the nair of the rasha. But what happens to the nair of the tzaddik and what happens to the or of the rasha? Okay, mom. So when you say I this I'm I'm sure this question is hidden in some of the questions that have already been given, but you know metaphorically, light and candle and illumination and wisdom somehow seem to have a place in this. Are you asking a question or are you giving an interpretation? I want you to do the question because I <laughs> I I don't know how to. Uh, All right. So I, I think yeah I think that is probably covered in what is it a metaphor? Yeah, that's what, what is. Uh, Oh, where is it? Oh, maybe I missed that. So, what uh, number? Is metaphor number seven. Oh, right now it's number seven. Is this a metaphor at all? And if so, what is oh. the nimshal? What is it that the metaphor stands for? Oh, okay. And, so something, that something about knowledge. Okay, yeah, something about something about. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Yep. Rifki. Yeah, I'm not sure if you would include this in like the practical application, but I I'm just wondering like if we think that the Sadiqim and the Rashaim are like doing something actively to cause those things to happen or if they're at happening as a result of like something else. Okay. Yeah. So I, I think we should ask that question as our other, one of our other general questions. What is the scenario here? Uh, if this is even talking about a specific scenario and then uh, I'll say like, you know, like in other words, are the, someone said this earlier, but are the tzaddikim and Rashaim uh, doing anything or just existing and having this effect? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, mom. 
Um, sorry, I forgot to lower oh, my okay. hand. Okay, Tamar? This is a methodology question. You might have uh, addressed this in other year, but when you have this kind of like an easy translation and a hard translation, I would yeah. say, right? Is there like a, a good strategy for how to, you know, what to think about first or things like right. that? Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll give you the two answers that I usually give, uh, which is always good to review. So um, uh, I actually went back, hold on a second. Okay, I might actually, I, I went back and, and reread a journal that I wrote in my first year of yeshiva. Uh, and uh, I think I might be getting my story wrong, but I'm going to tell it the way that I usually tell it, which is that um, that when I was in Gemara with Rabbi Mann and we had a machlokis uh, and we're trying to understand both of the sides, then I remember Rabbi Mann suggested that you should start with the easier side because your mind is already operating in that direction and so you might as well just, you know, formulate it uh, clearly. Rabbi Moskowitz said, start with the hard side, because if you start with the easy side in the direction your mind is going, then you're going to lock yourself into that side and it's going to be harder to break out. So it, you're, it's going to be more productive to force yourself to think in the non-intuitive way. Uh, and then you can always come back to the way that your mind was thinking originally. And then when I asked Rabbi Chait about it, he said, uh, they're both wrong. Uh, there's no rules when it comes to thinking. Uh, so... So that, that's one answer that I was given. And then the other answer that Rabbi Moskowitz would always do when we were learning Mishle is he would choose the, the harder read because it's more fun. That's what he would say, you know? Um, and I think he meant that literally that like, it is more fun. So like, and 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 you should, you'd enjoy it more. But I think he also meant that you're going to get more out of it because you're going to force your mind to work in a direction that it's not accustomed to. Um, so that's, uh, that's that. So uh, take from those answers what you may. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, next is my dad. So, what is the nature of this? Is the candle flickering or sputtering as opposed to just being extinguished? What, right. I what think is my mom asked that. What is the implication of flickering or sputtering out instead of just being extinguished? Yeah. Um, I guess we should also ask, though, another question, which is what causes it to. Uh, to to go out right yeah and also likewise what causes um let's see uh what causes it to yismach yeah tomorrow um who is the audience and i guess one uh like sub question of that is like is the audience that's the people who might be tzaddik and morishayim or is it something else okay good um Hold on a second. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, put these here. Yeah. Okay. So who is the intended audience? Yeah. Okay. Good. Isaiah. Um, <clears throat> what does this light illuminate? Okay. That is a good question. Light presumably would illuminate things. So let, where do we have this here? Uh, yeah. Um, what? Yeah, I'm just trying to think where should we... I'm going to actually put this in question three, which is what do these things illuminate? Yeah, I guess what do they illuminate? Huh, a lot more questions than I anticipated here. Um, you know, I'm also going to ask what causes it, what causes the or of tzaddikim to yismach? And then like, um, and then how does it, uh do this then that might be the same question depending on how we answer it okay i think that might be all the questions so i'm going to go ahead and start uh, i'm going to copy and paste the uh, translation into the chat as well so let's start with the translation oh my goodness okay now zoom is messing up the format okay what's going on here okay hold on let's just try this one okay first of all there's the pasuk boom so now apparently it preserves the format and messes it up. Here is that. Then let's do, let's see how many questions we can get. Okay, there are the first. Yep. Zoom chat has just decided to auto format all of these questions. They're all, all the text here. That, that, that's fun. Okay. And then uh, one through it's through nine, and then the last three or the last four. It's possible there are more questions, but I think this is a good time to start. 
trying to answer them. Oh, yeah. Wow. Just messes everything up. Just messes up all the numbers. <laughs> just when you thought the Zoom chat couldn't get any worse. It just goes ahead and it gets worse. Okay. It's entitled. Okay. Let's take our thinking minute. I'll tell you, by the way, you know, if you take rejoice as your translation, it's very hard to say that it rejoice. Like if you're going to say it rejoices, so then that's definitely a, a, a presumably a figure of speech because light is not sentient, you know. So if you're going to say it rejoices, it's very hard to say that it doesn't mean something like shine or increase, you know. So like. That's the real challenge here. Going back to tomorrow's question about like, you know, what, what approach do we take? Like, I feel like here, if you do take rejoice, you're going to end up here anyway. So, so then I guess you have to answer. Let me maybe add to this then. Um, what does it mean for the light of the city to rejoice? If you use means rejoice. And then why would the Pasuk express it um, like uh, uh, figuratively if it could have just said shine or increase. Yeah. I see no hands going up. <laughs> oh, there we go. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> Bunch of them can I have one more question, actually? Yeah. What's your question? Um, you know, it's just interesting because, like, um, I I know it's not referring to, I mean, it, like, it's not like the candle isn't referring to the Rashaim or the light is referring to, to the Tzadikim. Like, it is interesting that like we, it was just an observation. Like, we're we're, we're you know that there's a candle associated with the Rasha like, in general. Right. Yeah. You know, uh, I actually that that um that made me think of another question which we didn't list, which is um. Uh, you know, so usually if it just said uh, Tzadikim and Roshaim, I wouldn't really bat an eye. But I think it's weird that it says, so So why is, why are light and candle singular, but um, but Tzadikim and Roshaim plural? Okay, um, does this mean the light of each of the Tzadikim? Uh, and the candle of each of the Rashaim, or is there some sort of collective candle that belongs? Oh, sorry, collective light that belongs to all the tadikim, and the same and uh, and a collective candle for all the Rashaim. Yeah, I'll add this to the chat. Which is gonna mess up the numbers. Woo. Okay. Okay, Isaiah, what do you gotta say? Okay, so I think that the the thing that the or and the nair are referring to is like a person's like intellectual faculty, rational okay. faculty. For the for the tzaddik, like as he goes along with life, he, he uses rational faculty, it like <clears throat> illuminates the way for him. And it always pulls him into like you know, a greater place or like into a further like understanding of the world and like better perspective on life. And so he continues wanting to use it. <clears throat> it makes him like, like he himself, he is his rational faculty. So he becomes more joyous from that, like from that fact. Oh, okay. That's good. Um, okay. But for the, for the Russia, like Russia has a rational faculty <clears throat> and he uses it, but he uses it to like, wicked ends or ends that bring him pain and so like he tries to use it but he gets turned off from using it and just like it like sputters and goes out and he doesn't 
desire to use it anymore. Okay, I'm going to ask point. you to repeat that in a second because I was my mind was still caught on this first part. So let me just read what I have so far. So Light and Kendall are referring to their respective intellectual faculties. I really like that move that you made that the Tzadik's intellectual faculty illuminates the way. So that's like a uh, that's like a uh, a a a benefit, right? Right, which is a uh, like a I'm going to call it a practical benefit, even though it's not just practical. I guess a practical and um, like a, a practical benefit and a, an intrinsic benefit. Okay, um, and since he is his rational faculty, that's the move that I really like. It also makes him rejoice. Okay, say the part about the uh, the Russia again. So the Russia, he too, ha he also has it, but when he he uses it for his own like wicked ends. Okay, and so it causes him to like not want to use it anymore because he he uses thought, but then it is his downfall, and so it like he uses it less and less. It sputters out, and he doesn't desire to use it anymore. Okay, which means he won't not use it. All right, so the thing I I, I don't either I don't get or I don't like about that. I'm not sure if I am missing something. Is that that's not why a candle flickers out. Right. If anything, it's the opposite that a candle flickers out or um or 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 sputters out or is extinguished because you use it to the end. You know, and if it was referring to him voluntarily not using it, then that would be he puts it out, not it goes out. I guess I'm is just it... thinking of of it like as a looser metaphor, like it loses its strength. Uh, uh -huh. and not so much that it like it literally runs out of fuel or something. Okay, right. Like so that. I I I I I find that to be a slightly difficult read only because yidach is such a specific word. <laughs> uh, and again, I don't really care if it's go out or flicker out or sputter out, but like extinguishing, I think is. Well, I think. Yeah. I think just to me, it fits well because like it's like he'll use it like less and less. Like it's there, and then like it sputters and flickers, and then it'll stop because okay. like he'll want to move away from it. All right, so I'm going to write what you have, and then tomorrow I have something to add to this. Uh, and then I, I think there's another direction we can take with this, but make him use it less and less until it eventually uh, goes out. Okay, yeah, tomorrow, what do you want to add? I, I was going to give another, like, like physical interpretation of something flickering out, which is that, sure. like, the wind comes or something, so there's, like, an external force that overrides uh, it. Okay, okay, that's, that's a good possibility. Okay, hold on a second here. So I'm going to list all the possibilities and what we can always uh, select. So... Uh, alternatively, um, candles flicker out because of the wind, uh, whereas light doesn't. Okay. All right. So that's another reading. Yeah. I had a thought. Hold on. Let me think for one second here. See, I thought. Hold on. See, because what I was thinking, and, and I guess I was thinking this because I think this is the most conservative reading of the mushal. Why do all candles go out? Because candles or lamps have limited fuel. So I was trying to work on something that um, I'm just going to write. Uh, we, we haven't really decoded this yet uh, for tomorrow or for me, but um, uh, alternatively, it will run out of fuel and be extinguished of its own accord. Okay, and I thought that was the direction you were going. That the Russia is using it for his own wicked ends. In other words, if you're using light to see things, like to illuminate the way, then it's kind of like a self perpetuating thing. Where the more you, like, the more of the path you see, then the more of the path you could go on, and then the more of the path you see, and then the more of the path you could go on. You know, it just keeps on going. Whereas if you're limited in the way that you're using it. Yeah, I, I need to work on mine a little bit more. But yeah, um, anyone else have anything they want to add to to either of these uh, general this general approach or to these specific? Oh, I thought of something. Yeah, go ahead. So maybe, maybe I don't know if this is going in a different direction quite. But like maybe the the fuel is like the person themselves, and so okay. like for the tzaddik, like he grows as a person, so he he becomes more powerful in that faculty, yeah. and so he gains fuel, but the russia like he like diminishes his like rational soul and okay. loses the ability to use it and the light goes out from that fact okay, okay that's good i'm doing this is a pun second isaiah are you familiar with that yeah okay. <laughs> um that's the reference to the fact that uh what is it is it a christian thing uh Heard of. yeah that 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 i think the christians divided uh the book of isaiah into two Two books and like it's nice to hear Christians quote Second Isaiah. So um is that um 
the the candle is uh is the Russia himself. You said it really well. Say it one more time. Well, I think it's the Russia and the, the candle is the Russia himself. And as he moves away from using his rational faculty, then he loses himself. Like he becomes less. I don't know. I'm not saying as well as I did the first time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and he, uh, he, he the, I'll just leave it general for now. And the way he uses his mind um, diminishes his mind. Right. Um, so we have to figure that out as well. Okay, I needed a good possibilities. Let's let's keep these here and put these on the side burner, okay? Um, and I know for sure that there are Mafarshim who are gonna take this approach, um, but we'll keep it on the side for now and we'll develop it uh, as we think. Okay, uh, Rifki. Okay, so I was thinking of like this whole idea in terms of like, I guess purity and like, just like that light as a concept is in general, like we have this idea that like, you know, bad things only really happen in the dark. And like, obviously that's not like a hundred percent true, but like generally, like when someone goes to like murder someone, like you're not necessarily going to do it in the light of day. Yeah. Um. So I was thinking in terms of that, just like purity and openness and like all of those different things. And that in terms of like why it says or versus nair, kind of similar to like the last thing Isaiah was starting to say, that I think like the reason why it uses or for a tzaddik is because it's just like, that's just himself. Like there's nothing to hide. Like that is his way. Like he's a pure person. He wants to help the world around him. He wants to help his community. Like there's nothing that he has to hide. Whereas the Russia, even though he might appear as someone who wants to do those things, it's not his essence. It's not his being. And that's why it's not, or it's not like light that's eternal. It's just this, I guess, tiny example or this tiny um, usage of light, because obviously it's the same like entity, but it's in a completely different capacity. Okay. Um, that, that, that's basically the idea. Okay. Yeah. All right. That, 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 I think that's a good, uh, a good inroad. Yeah. Uh, and I also think that's why flicker like makes sense because it's not clear. Like it's not like always illuminated, but it's also not always like going out. Okay. So it implies a lesser quality than the than than light uh which is pure okay good all right let's put this on the other side burner okay uh tomorrow okay so this is only like a i don't know approach or like a half idea or something yeah but... i think i think I'm, I'm sensing that's kind of the, what we're gonna be doing tonight is okay. getting <laughs> half approaches yeah. on the table and developing them yeah okay so um what i want to say is that i want to take this like as literally as possible the light as literally as possible yeah um but not not fully i think but like i want to say that light means like you're literally trying to see something or reveal something right. and i know that's why i'm calling this half because i don't know exactly know what you're doing with that um and then i want to say that yismach means that it's successful in its illumination and then okay. yidaf means that the maybe that while he's trying to illuminate the light somehow fails okay all right i'm gonna bring you support in one second and then um yidaf, uh means means failure okay i want to bring a proof from the meiri just a linguistic proof we're not going to read the whole thing so he says um uh sometimes light means extreme success for example this possibly we we know for the jews there was light now if you think about that in the megillah it does not mean that like there was light, right? It's a that's clearly like a figure of speech that means success. Al derech shemilas choshek munafes lefamim al rov hatsara, and he says that um that uh, this is kind of like what Rivki was saying. Um, the darkness means uh, Rivki didn't say tsara, but like bad stuff, you know. Um, but machashakim hoshivani that uh, says uh, um, he has uh, uh, placed me in the darkness uh, in the in the deep darkness. Vadoshem yigia choshki. Uh, I'm not familiar with that one. Tsar v'or choshech b'ari feha. I'm not sure you're familiar with that one either. Um, and then he says, let me see here. V'halashon uh, yatir al-mash yismach alav ha'adam sh'yichasu ha-simcha l'davar sh'adam sameach bo. You can say that about something that a person is happy about, sh'yichasu ha-simcha l'davar sh'adam sameach bo. You can ascribe the joy to the thing that the person is happy about. And you could also ascribe the sadness 
uh, or the pain to the thing that the person is sad, uh, is sad or pained about. Kamo epas razon zoma shal shim shahadam etzev bechisusa bechasorna tiuchas Allah hashim zoma v'hafko amruzal tefach sochik. Okay, so before we read what he says, so he's saying. So I, I was reading that just to to show that it um it uh, supports what Tamara is saying that that the tzaddikim uh, uh the light of the tzaddikim rejoicing means it is successful okay whatever that is and then yidach uh would be the opposite of success okay that's a good half idea okay next up is my dad I'm going from the point of view of the target audience for this okay. And, excuse me. And we're looking at light. What happens to what can happen to light? And in this case, we're talking about light being something to do with wisdom and intelligence. Light can either increase, mm -hmm. sputter, and go out. From the point of view of the target audience, the Rasha will still show light. Mm, okay. Go from light to darkness. Okay, that's good. You may think that that light is is valid and important. And you don't know when you see that light which direction it's going to go. Fire starts small and then they get big. So okay. you may see the light; it may sound wise, but you should be careful because ultimately it will go out. If, okay, that's a good. All right, that, that, I think that's a really good direction for practical, um, a practical uh, impl uh, implementation, even though we don't know the details yet. So, so the puzzle is telling you that the Russia's light uh, is destined to go out. Uh, whereas the tzaddiks, uh, will I, I think for here will grow brighter uh, is uh, you know is is is, is the, probably the most likely candidate. Okay, good. I think that's another good half idea. All right, got a lot got a lot of nice half ideas here. Yeah, Ariel. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think my idea is going to be very extremely similar to a lot of the ideas that sure. I was presenting, but I think most closely to like Rifki's idea maybe. But okay. but I want to say that like. Uh, you know, like it's kind of already highlighting like the end result, you know, like, you know, you have like the Tzaddik's lifestyle, then you have like a Russia's lifestyle. Like that's already what it is. And I think the, 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 the light, um, and you know, the candle, you know, that that's just the, that's just their lifestyle or their, um, <coughs> you know, uh, or that's just, you know, yeah, it's just a lifestyle, you know, like, like if you're if you're righteous, you know the the beam or or, or the light like that is like uh, an illumination of of everything like almost like makes sense or like like it's proper or like it it's it all you know it, it's just all the same like and that that's like greatness you know like everything the the the, the, the Sadik's lifestyle is just you know perfect. There's nothing bad you know and like um and it's very clear and very dis distinguished and. Uh, you know, there's no, there's no issues yet, you know, but like with, with like, you know, the Russia, you know, like his, his lifestyle, it just creates a lot of chaos, a lot of issues, a lot of challenges, a lot of, you know, destructiveness. And it's almost like, you know, like I'm imagining like a scene in a movie where like someone has like a candle, like in a, in a little room that's like flickering in the darkness, yeah. you know, it's like, it's like, it's scary in there, you know, right. The, yeah, that's kind of like how I'm envisioning this. Okay, uh, so the, the, I I think that, that is a a good general approach, but I think the imagery you just conjured up gives me an idea as well. Okay, which is, um, which is the again, it's a half idea here. Okay, but perhaps, uh, it's 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 like focusing on the fact that the Russia, uh, is only one step away from total darkness. Uh, in other words. Um, like that imagery of the person in the room with the candle that's flickering, like, first of all, you only have a candle when you're in the dark, you know, and, uh, and like, you're, just, if that goes out, then you're plunged into darkness and then, and then you're in trouble. Yeah. And I guess like, you know, sputtering out, you know, it's almost like the, the oil that it's used is corrupt and it's disgusting and it's garbage. And like, like it's, a, it's like about to go out any second. You know? Yeah. 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 Okay, good. All right, so let's do this now. Okay, this is this is a very interesting mishlash here tonight. Uh, I I don't I can't seem to remember another time when we've had so many like half ideas. Okay, which is fine, but let's go to the mafarshim now and then see what they uh have to say and see which of our ideas like get developed from what they say. Okay, so first one we have here, and I'm just gonna go in order. All right, 
Uh, we're not going to go through all of them, but we'll we'll see uh, as we go. Okay, so the first one is Matus David, um, and he says Nishmas Hatzadik Tismach Began Eden. Okay, the uh, the soul of a tzaddik will rejoice in Gan Eden. Okay, which will for our purposes we'll just say like uh, AKA Olam Haba. Okay, I don't think it's talking about the, like the literal Garden of Eden. About Nishmas Harasha Tia Kavuya Vlo Ta'ir, but the soul of the the Russia will be extinguished uh extinguished and will not illuminate okay that does not help us so much <laughs> okay um so I'm I'm, I'm I'm gonna just go through until we find something that like like catches and then we'll uh we'll, we'll explore it all right all right rashi similarly says i'm not even going to translate this uh, he, uh i'm not going to write it out he says lushum kfitza means jumping that it'll go out shall shall have this uh the shall have it uh the uh the flame leaps and then literally is cut off okay so i think i don't know if rashi is also alluding to the the uh um like the the not having a lamhaba thing okay let's do urbane yona this this should be uh this should be more uh give us more direction okay so he says like this nefesh tzadik the soul of tzadik dome is comparable uh laor to light lefishihi kayemes laolam because it lasts forever kamo or like light the inkuma talibamacham acher uh, Zulasi Bashemi Salah, and its uh, its its existence is not dependent on anything other than Hashem, Kasher or Hashemish. Just as okay, ignore this uh, scientifically inaccurate statement here, um, but uh, just for the purpose of the moment, just as the light of the sun in Havayasa Uzrichasa Tulim Basi Bacheres Zulasi Bashemi Salah is not dependent. Sorry, just like the light. And shining of the sun is not dependent on anything other than Hashem. Okay, I, I don't know what they believe about like the sun, you know, but they did not know about um, they didn't know they didn't know that the sun was going to go out someday. Okay, fine. The nefesh hatzadik, uh, the soul of a tzadik, tismach leolam will rejoice forever. Higam ba'olam hazeh tismach b'mitzvos, because even in in this world. It will rejoice in mitzvos. al haguf and if afflictions befall his body, tismach uh, he will rejoice in afflictions. Af ki tismach haba, he will also rejoice in the world to come. Simcha uh, shein la with a joy that doesn't cease. V'chein hashemesh samach laasos laolam ratzon boro. Uh, and the sun also rejoices to do the will of its creator. Commotion MR, as it is stated in Tehillim, um, Yasis Kigibur Larutz Orach. It rejoices like a warrior running the course. Uh, that's Tehillim 19.6. The um, Amruzal and the sages uh, said, Osin um, Me'ava Usmechim I think they're talking about Tzadikim here, um, that the righteous. Um, act out of love and rejoice in afflictions. Alehem akasu v'omer about them. The pasuk says, "V'ohav ukates Hashem shbi gvoraso," like the sun that emerges in its might. Okay, and that's Shoftim five thirty one. Okay, we're, I'm going to translate the whole Rebbeinu, and then we'll stop and analyze. Um, okay, then we got the soul of the wicked, the uh, the candle of the wicked will go out. Yidme nafsham the soul, uh, yeah, the soul of the wicked is compared to a candle that flickers out. So this is like what Isaiah said, uh, in the sense that it's referring to the same thing in both the tzaddikim and the rishonim, but it's calling the tzaddik the tzaddik's light and it's calling the rush as a candle uh, that ultimately flickers out. Sheoru um, talui b'shemen. This is like I was saying, uh, because its light. Is dependent on oil, obshava, or on a wick, ukachalosam, and when that oil or wick um, is finished, yida, it will go out. V'chein nefesh rasha. So too, the soul of the rasha, um, tluya, is dependent on bakim haguf on the persistence of his body. Im haguf he semecha umatzlacha slifam v'luzeh. Oh, this is like what my dad was saying. And even if his, even, and, and, and although his body may, 
rejoice and be successful, okay, like tomorrow was saying, in this world, uh, in, in this world, uh, once his body finishes, his joy um, will also perish. Okay. Yeah. All right. So th this is like a combo of a bunch of our ideas here. Okay. So let, let's let's take it step by step. Okay. Uh, let me just write a summary here. A summary of summary of Rabbeinu Yona. Okay. So so first of all, so the, the subject of the pasuk. What do you say the subject of the pasuk is according to him? It's a little bit broad, but uh, <laughs> see if we can narrow it down. The fate. <laughs> Like the fate of the soul of the tzaddik versus the fate of the soul of the rasha. Okay, sure. So the fate of the souls of the tzaddikim, uh, tzaddikim and rishayim. Okay, so so he's saying the tzaddik's soul is compared to a like to light itself. Okay, um, which is not dependent on anything physical. All right. Um, just like the sun, okay, uh, which we can say just like light itself. I, I, I mean, I, I don't know enough about light to say like what the, I, I don't know enough to say like if there's a, a modern equivalent, but I know I know the sun doesn't work like that. But let's say in, in our world, and the sun is like something that we associate as like not running out of fuel, okay, fine. So just like the sun, okay. Um, so what are the ramifications here? So, um, it will rejoice. Uh, in this world, and by the way, I th even though he doesn't say it, I think Isaiah's interpretation of of light rejoicing is good because it does illuminate. But it, in other words, the the, the soul that's so. All right, we hold that the soul is the telemelukim, which is the part of the human being that can gain knowledge, right, or can apprehend truth. So, on the one hand, it illuminates things, but it also is the part of you that like flourishes and rejoices and uh you know so we can speak of it as 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 both illuminating and rejoicing it's not like alter said where it doesn't make sense to say the candle rejoices but yeah a candle doesn't rejoice but if you're using the candle as a muscle for the soul then the soul can illuminate and rejoice in fact it's the only thing that can illuminate and rejoice okay so it will rejoice so i guess he will rejoice he will rejoice in the activity of his soul uh in this world okay which is very funny because you know, Rubenu Yona puts it in terms of mitzvos, um, uh, and whereas I feel like if this were the Rambam or the Rabbah talking, he would say it's in terms of gaining knowledge. You know, but whatever we could, we could, you know, we could say that we could just say um, uh, in uh, let's broaden it a little bit, okay? In doing mitzvos, and we'll put in brackets and serving Hashem, okay? Um, and that joy is unaffected by suffering, okay? Because the tzaddik can rejoice in suffering. Now, let's just take a moment here to uh, to get some idea of what does it mean that he rejoices in suffering, right? That's like, um, that's a high level. Like he grows from it? Yeah, I think so, right? Uh, is that, uh, in fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bust out a Marcus Aurelius here. Um, so uh, I, I don't remember what episode of the Stoke Jew podcast this was, but there was one episode where I compared Bruce Lee's uh, be water to Mark Marcus really says be fire. Okay. Um, so Bruce Lee has the famous, uh, uh, be water, right? So Bruce Lee says, empty your mind, be formless, shapeless, like water. Now, if you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it into a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. But then Marcus Aurelius says fire. Um, there's a lot of fire here. Hold on. Uh, yeah. So he says the ruling power within, okay, this is in book four, meditation one, the ruling power within, which is your soul, when it is in accordance with nature, so confronts what comes to pass as always to adapt itself readily to that which is and that which is presented to it, meaning that your soul can adapt to whatever it encounters. This is because it requires no definite material. Okay. Oh, this, is, this actually fits in really well, right? Uh, it's not like a, um, it's not dependent on a fuel source, okay? Rather, it moves towards its purpose with the reservation and then makes the opposition which encounters it into material for itself. 
It is like a fire when it masters what falls into it, whereby a little flame would have been put out, but a bright fire very quickly appropriates to itself the matter which is heaped upon it and consumes it and rises higher by means of this very material. Okay, not the same muscle, but it is a good muscle, right? He's saying that he is, it's good for the Russia. He's saying that, that um, a lesser soul is going to be like a small fire, which if you expose it to the material, it'll just like sputter out. But if you have a, a, a bonfire and you put material into it, it'll burn the, the thing, you know? So, all right, fine. It's not as, as exactly as I thought, but it's a nice idea. So I think what Rivki said is true, which is that, that, when the tzaddik experiences suffering, then the tzaddik uses that to grow, either to learn from it. Like if the suffering was caused by himself, he he uh, from a mistake he made, then he uses it to learn about his mistake. And if it is something that's not in his control, then he can use it as an impetus to examine himself for how he reacts to it and to do teshuva and to like, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, contemplate his place in, in the universe and that there are things that are outside of his control that he's subject, you know, meaning he's going to find some way to use it as a way to improve himself. Okay. Um, and so, so it doesn't really harm him. Okay. Um, and he can actually use it as a cause of, uh, of joy. You know, this is also in the Rambam. Let me just get the Rambam lot also. Um, where does he say it? Morith B13. Uh, spoiler alert, conclusion of Eov. Um, no, but at the very end of Eov, he says, uh, you know what? I'm not going to go to Eov. <laughs> Too much. Okay. All right, fine. All right, so that is the rejoicing and suffering. Okay, fine. So let's go back. Okay, then he quotes to the sun again. Okay, then he says, uh, the soul of the wicked, okay, on the other hand, uh, on the other hand, the soul of the wicked um uh is uh is also like um burning right but is dependent entirely on on his physical existence and when when that existence goes out then the uh the the joy ceases okay so so it doesn't say for him the opposite of the tzaddik rejoicing and suffering but the implication is that the russia does not rejoice in suffering okay and the, the reason is obvious why why doesn't the russia rejoice in suffering what would you say see it as an opportunity in like the same way that the tzaddik does okay because he's not looking for those opportunities to grow and therefore will only see the suffering as a like as a diminishing of his physical existence yeah if you have a, a question or something dad yeah i have a question which i mean we are you done with the summary uh, i think i'm done with whatever he wrote but there might be more that we need to add but yeah good there's a good time to go to say what you want to say yeah so my question is I just feel like I, I really like his first half like about the Tzaddik, but I'm not mm -hmm. understanding how the second half equals to like a level of a Russia. Because so I feel like that's, I don't know. I feel like that would be a lower level of someone that's not as bad as a Russia. Like it's very hard to see those experiences as. Right. You mean, why does it have to go all the way to the extreme of yeah. Russia? Yeah. Okay. That's a good question. Right. I mean, it seems like just a non, even a non Tzaddik who's like a fool or even someone who's not even a fool, like even a regular person is going to be um, living in a way that they're deriving most of their, they're using their mind for the physical and like getting most of the enjoyment out of the physical. That's a good question. Uh, I'll list that question here. Okay. Like, why does this go all the way to the extreme of the Russia? Okay. Uh, did Tamar, did you also have your hand up? I was just going to, it's, it's a minor point, but it's about the summary, I guess. Um, yeah, sure. why the Russia doesn't rejoice in suffering. I think it's not just he's, he's not looking for opportunities to grow. It's also like when he's suffering, he's losing the one thing that he actually cares about. Yeah, that is what I was uh, trying to allude to. We only see the suffering as a diminishing of his physical existence. I'll add, uh, which is all he cares about. Yeah. but I So I think there's also something here. I'm not saying that the Rubenu Yona is emphasizing this point, but, um, but my dad's point about not being misled by the success that the Russia enjoys, I think that's also like, you know, alluded to here as well that um, 
that because he does say that even though like Rubinion is contrasting, he's saying don't think that the tzad- so okay let me, let me just draw one more point Rubinion is that um the uh the message is don't think that the tzaddik sorry when, when you see the tzaddik suffering when you see a tzaddik suffering don't think that this is diminishing him in any way to the contrary he is rejoicing and his light is increasing okay likewise when you see the russia enjoying worldly success don't take that as a sign that he is truly flourishing okay in reality and he didn't say this but i think it fits in really well he's just burning up more of his of his limited fuel and he will uh one day cease entirely yeah yeah, this is an example of where I don't know whether the Rabbeinu Yona just has a much like I feel like the the type of initially idea that we look for is more specific and precise, and Rabbeinu is like casting a wide net, or maybe we're just not understanding the unity in Rabbeinu Yona's idea. But I feel like there's like several different approaches in here that like he's alluding to like, you know the immortality of the soul he's alluding to like rejoicing and suffering he's talking about like rejoicing and doing mitzvos you know i'm not exactly comfortable with what the central idea is in rabiniana yeah okay um let's keep going because I, I again i i think I'm, I'm just sensing that the way to um to make progress here is to just uh you know we got all of our ideas out on the table let's just see what the other mafarshim say here all right i'm gonna go through a couple more of our classics um, which is Me'iri, which we already read the first half of Me'iri, which was all about the words. Um, uh, so he says, uh, will rejoice, Klomar, means Shiosif uh, Yom It will increase every day until it is at the uh, the pinnacle uh, of perfection. Amro, as it is stated, uh, or noga holek, but or ad So, uh, this is a, a pasuk earlier in Mishlei. Um, tzaddikim are like uh, the uh, a, a bright, uh, sorry, a bright light, continuing to increase until until noon. Uh, that's Mishlei four eighteen. Okay, but Hatzlach is a Russia, but the success of the Russia. Sorry, what happened? Where did my thing go? The success of the Russia uh, is called a candle, Liosa Lamatamin Or, because that is lower than light. The Amar, and he said, Sha'af Haner Hahu Yidach, that even this candle will flicker out. Rotz Lomar, that means to say, Yichasehu Me'at Ma'at Ad That's interesting. It will be gradually covered until it goes out. This is telling you to choose the right path. <laughs> Miri is being very uh, non, uh, also not elaborate in this idea here. Okay, we need someone to really spell out a full idea. Uh, I'm just going to. Um... Okay, Rabbi Bog takes a Alam Haba. We may not get that. Let's see the mobim. Or who etama or kmo. Okay, so I'm, I'm, let's do the mobim, and then we'll we'll work through our ideas and just see uh, if we can get some at least one full thing. Right now, it's looking like Isaiah's is the best candidate, at least my favorite candidate. So the mobim says or who etim haor. So light uh, in this context means light itself. Kmo uh, or hashemesh, like the light of the sun, hameir tamid, which illuminates constantly. And is not in need of oil or a wick. Whereas a nair uh, is made of uh, a lamp that uh, requires oil and a wick. Okay. Hatzadikim, the righteous, nishmasam tayr baor tamidi nitzchi. Their souls illuminate 
with a continual eternal light. Or is our tadik? Okay, like it says, light is sown for the righteous. Uh, and they don't need a ner, which is the body. Because um, the soul, the spiritual soul, illuminates uh, eternally with a spiritual light. Okay, we'll have to see what he means by this. Uh, and and this rejoices uh, constantly, continually. Commotion uh, MR, as it is stated, will you raise it? Leave Simcha. Oops. Uh, and uh, and to the upright and joy to the upright of heart. Okay. Simchu uh, Bashem. They rejoice in Hashem. See, he's also not giving us specifics here. Of Al Rashaim, but the wicked, or Hatzlachasam, the light of their uh, Hagashmi, of their physical success. Physic oh, I typed it physical twice. Okay. Of their physical success, um, who rock ball is only in this world. Um, so long as their candle and wick uh, uh, exist. Rotolomar, in other words, for the Kol Yichayel Haguf, for the duration of their physical life. The Akar Kalos Hashem in Vapsila, and after their uh, oil and wick have finished, Yidach Haner, their candle will go out. Uh, and their success will be over. Uh, so he connects us to the previous two pesukim. Okay, so this is very similar to the Rebbein Yona, very similar to Isaiah. I think what we need to do now is I think we need to try to come up with a synthesized idea of like the best of all these approaches and try to get one idea that like um, that like explains the whole pasuk. Okay, so let, let's aim for a um, synthesized, synthesized best of uh, explanation. All right, so l let's think about that. This is a very different cheer. <laughs> okay. So I, I, it seems like the the um, we've got two directions to go in terms of the light, right? Either the light is the soul or the light is the success. Okay. So which of those do we like better? Yeah, Ariel? Yeah, I, I had a thought a while back on one of them unfortunately. I forgot which one, but uh he, some something he uh something he said you know, like sparked a thought, you know, where um yeah, I don't remember what he said, but whatever. Like, you know, like I feel like when you know with the tzaddik, like when he's down, you know, or when he's like, you know, at at you know, when he's like at a very difficult you know, situation or, um, you know, he has challenges, like, because he's a tzaddik, like, he'll, like, he'll come out of it okay, you know, yeah. like, um, like, he has, like, uh, you know, like, like he has, like, 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 the light, like, there's, two, it's, like, two different types of lights, like, like, one is, like, like, the, the dark and, like, how to go about something, and, like, then you have, like, the, you know, like, the, you know, this the the light that will shine before his success in a sense. Yeah. You know, it's almost like um, you know, he has he has the tools necessary to get there. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know who whose idea was that. I mean, Rubin Yona is talking about when he's suffering and and uh you know, and we were interpreting that to mean that he's able to like grow from it or learn from it or or make use of it. Uh I, okay, okay. I, I think maybe it's just because I'm I'm prejudiced towards Isaiah's idea. Um, but I, I don't know where this is going to go. I'm just going to start writing uh, writing it uh, in, in in that sense. Okay, so so um, so the pasuk must be talking about the soul, since there is only one entity that both illuminates and rejoices. Okay, namely the Tzelem Elokim. Okay, the 
Uh, so I mean, this is going to be like virtually identical with, with Isaiah's first half. Okay, so the first half of the Pasuk uh, describes the um, the soul of the Tzaddik. Okay, so since since he uses it to gain knowledge um, and he is attached, sorry, so let me try this again. Since he, since his primary value is the pursuit of knowledge. Now, it's interesting because in Mishle, his primary value is the pursuit of knowledge in order to do justice. Okay, so I'm going to add that even though the puzzle doesn't say it. In order to implement uh, Tzedek, okay, uh, so then the more he uses it, the more um, it will illuminate and the more joy it will bring bring him, right? So intrinsically and in terms of its utility. Okay. So then in contrast, the soul of the Russia, I'm sorry, Soul of the Russian, there might be more for the person, is compared to a candle, which is a limited light that has limited fuel. Okay. Um it will it, it will will only illuminate. Um yeah, you know what? Hold on a second. See, I, 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 maybe the Meiri has it right that the light of the Tzadik is talking about, or maybe this is also what Rabin Yona was getting at, that the light of the, the Tzadik is like sunlight, you know, that it's not dependent on a location or on a source. It's just there, you know. Um, yeah, but the candle, it will only illuminate the limited range, uh, like a limited range. And once it it consumes its fuel... It will burn out. Okay, so too. So this is uh, this is. I'm going to try to take this the direction I was going to take it. We may have to go back. Um, the Russia is only applying his mind to the limited range of phenomena uh, that will, um, in his imagination, ensure uh, ensure his his success, his personal success. Um and uh, yeah, okay, so this is where it starts to get a little dicey, right? The, the the that's the way that we take the Russia, that the Russia and Mishle is really just looking out to for his own self-aggrandizement. But that is not going to last. See, it's not an exact opposite. I mean, the quality that we're saying for the Tzadik is that it that his light illuminates and brings joy. And the Russia has a narrow illumination, does not bring joy, and goes out. So the tzaddiks, the tzaddiks is that it's going to last as well. Hmm. It, yeah, Tamar? Okay, I, I don't think this is exactly what the Mepharshim are saying, but sure. I want to try and posit something. Maybe it would solve yeah. some problems. Uh, so this... Mm, I want to stick more closely to mind than soul. Okay. Um, because the, I don't know, I keep, I keep getting reminded there's some sheer about like Haman, um, yeah. where like he was someone who was, who was acting very intelligently for a long time, but sort of once he got caught up in certain stages of his plan, he sort of made some irrational decisions. Right. Um, and he sort of got overwhelmed by the context because he wasn't really about his mind. His mind wasn't this independently functioning thing. It was all through this route of his personal goals right, it was in and service emotions. to his ego yeah in service to his ego right so yeah i want to say maybe you could i don't know if I mean, this is maybe too different of an idea but like maybe something is like the the mind just gets overwhelmed and doesn't get to function properly because it's all sort of physically grounded and it also doesn't endure for okay. that reason all right here what you're saying let me let me write that down also okay so um tomorrow uh which is that um that the this is about the mind of the tzaddik uh versus the russia so so for the tzaddik it's it's along the lines that we're saying right yeah okay um the russia 
may use his mind, but because he subordinates it to his, um, and I, I am saying not just from the example you gave, but I, he's subordinating it to his ego, it will become more and more limited the more he uses it um, until it flickers out of its own accord uh, because, uh, you know, when, uh, i.e., he will make a, uh, he, he will inevitably make a misstep. A horrendous misstep. Yeah, Tamar? Yeah. Um, I want to say sort of, it's kind of like what I was, uh, the read of the analogy is slightly less that he's running out of fuel because he's not feeding it properly. Although maybe that's also another way you could, you could read it, but that it's subject to external circumstances because it's okay. He's using it in this physical way. Okay. Um, hold on a second here. Um, uh, because he used put his ego, it is subject to external circumstances and will inevitably flicker out um, uh, because he is blinded by his ego. Okay, I like that idea. And I think that is definitely true. And I like the imagery here because the sun doesn't get blown out, right? Like sunlight doesn't get blown out. So it's just like, like it's like the element of light itself is like what the tzaddik has that power uh, because he's just interested in using his mind you know, for um, for things that are not tied to his own personal success, uh, and the whereas the rush is 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 uh, is is you know he's rendering himself vulnerable in the way he's using his mind. I'll just write that he's rendering himself vulnerable, vulnerable based on how he uses his mind. Yeah, Isaiah. Um. So in the per the synthesis explanation that we're yeah. working on, so I. I think I know I can finish it for the Russia. Sure. Is that um so I think the Mafarsham were saying that so we said that he only is applying his mind in the limited range of phenomenon to, in his imagination. So I think what that does is it's like it like it stunts the growth of his soul. So it doesn't it doesn't like cause more illumination, rather like the illumination isn't as good, and then it doesn't merit to last forever. It doesn't okay. get the eternal capacity that the Tzaddik soul gets. And so it okay. goes out. And will not get the capacity to last forever and will eventually go out. Okay. I think that's good. I'm going to do something weird. I'm going to cheat. I think I'm going to cheat. Um, I think there's another Pasuk that says, I thought there was another Pasuk that says, that says Nerushayim Yudach. And I think we did it in the morning um, last year or the year before. So I just want to see if I have notes on that. Because this was all sounding very familiar to me. <laughs> but I when I looked through and see if I gave a share in this puzzle, I hadn't. Um, oh, yeah, we did. Yeah, we did it last year. Uh, Mishle 2420. So this is 2420. I think this is a, a, a two puzzle thing. Mishle 24, 19, and 20. Yeah. Let me just see what I wrote there, what we, what we came up with. Okay, so this was Al Tishar Bamareim Al Tkane Oh, I didn't write this is back before I started writing down the summaries. Oh man. All right. <laughs> okay, never mind then. Um actually you know what? I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna double cheat. Hold on. Um we didn't write it down, but if I look at my show notes, I'll see which Mafarshim we used. And I can look on those psukum there. Because this is sounding very familiar. Okay. Initially 24. I do like the idea we have, by the way. This is not a criticism of our idea. Okay, this was, we did this in, on May 8th and May 9th. Okay, so if I go to here. Oh, wait, hold on a second here. Did I title them two different things? No, I didn't. Okay. Um, and I look at the Mafarshim here. Uh, Miri, Rubini, Yona, and Malvin, and Hugh Jackman. Apparently. Okay. Um, so let's see here. Uh, what did I just say? Meiri? Who's the first one? First one was the Meiri. So let me look at the Meiri there. Mishle 24. Uh, second half.
Okay, Miiri on that one. So the Pusuk said, uh, I should read the Pusuk. Pusuk said, Al tiskar bamareim, al tkani bershaim, don't assimilate with or desire or be provoked or compete with evildoers and don't be jealous of the wicked for there won't be kiloti achris lara, for there won't be a lasting good for evil or for the evil person near rishaim yidach. The lamp or the candle of the rishaim will flicker or sputter out. So the Mi'iri on that says, oh look, it's darkened. I don't think that was intentional. Even though it fits in really well. Okay. This is telling you to distance yourself from the friendship of evildoers and not to take on their ways and their actions. Don't get all heated up about these people, meaning don't get uh, uh, incited by them. Um, uh, and don't be compared to them. All don't be like them to do their actions. Or All of their success is only imaginary and it's not uh, genuine. And it will all go away. This is a compare uh, mashal for the soul. Okay, fine. All right. This is not really what we're doing. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see if there's anyone who took it the way that we did. Oh, man, there's a long rabbinian on here. Well, I'm just going to skim it. Okay, you know what? I don't think I want to go into this. I think this is going to draw us too much into uh, into this other positive. So let, let's just summarize what we have here. Okay. Oops. Okay. So at the end of the day, I think we have two interpretations. Okay. Um, or maybe one interpretation with two very uh, varieties at the end. So um, we have the idea that this puzzle is about the way that the soul of the tzaddik operates and the way that the soul of the rush operates. The tzaddik is going to operate in a way where he's using his mind to try to understand reality in order to do tzaddik. And what that's going to have is a bunch of great effects. Number one is it's going to give him more knowledge because the more he knows, the more he's going to like seek to know. It's going to give him enjoyment um, uh, intrinsically, the process of applying his mind. It's going to give him utility because he's going to be able to make better decisions for himself and for his society, which is going to improve everything. So it's all, all around going to be yismach. Okay, very general... Uh, um, bring it'll bring simcha, okay, uh, to him, uh, and it will. The implication from the second half is that the tzaddik's light is like the sunlight, which is that it'll last forever and will not be limited or or dependent on anything, um, because that's the nature of the soul. Okay, fine, but the light of the Russia is compared to a candle because he is only using it for the physical and he's using it only for the limited range of what makes me great. And the more he uses it, the more he's going to impair it. And uh, and he's going to eventually um, uh, extinguish himself. And so it's certainly not going to go out, but he's going to diminish it itself. Or if you take Tamar's approach, then he's using it in a very specific way, which is subordinating it to, like what the Miri calls the imaginary pleasure of the ego. And that's going to make him subject to a bunch of external circumstances that will threaten to, to wipe it out entirely. Um, and uh, and it's going to go out. So that is our approach to the Pasuk. And then Rabinu Yona added the thing, which I still think there's merit in here, about light being a muscle for su success and, uh, and extinguishing being a muscle for failure, that when the Tzadik, the Tzadik really is a source of light. So even when it looks like it's concealed, like by failure, you should know that there is light there and that it is, um, it is, you know, he's rejoicing. Meaning that that it's the, you know, like we said, is that even when the tzaddik is 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 suffering physically, he's using that for his own um, self improvement, and he's uh, he's appreciating that. Whereas when the Russia is um, is seemingly like casting off light, he is consuming his very finite. Um, limited resource and uh, he's going to burn out um and so uh because he's only living for the physical yeah all right difficult puzzle surprisingly difficult for the way that it was uh stated um you know so simply i, I think the practical takeaway for us though i want to make it more practical for us as the last step like i feel like rabbi yona's idea is practical um and but i feel like our idea is still a little bit on the abstract level. 
like what's the practical application like pursue knowledge and use it for tzedek like you know it could be i mean that, that's not wrong but i mean i definitely think that there's a warning for non rashaim that if you are to the extent see this is one where i think it's not see we have a lot of pesukim about rashaim and tzedekim that are like trying to to get you to choose the path of the tzaddik and then trying to keep you away from the path of the Russia. Here, I don't even think we're talking about someone who's tempted to, to become a Russia. I think everyone is, is prone to this mistake of the Russia, which is to use your mind for, for like egocentric goals. And you should know that whenever you do that, you're you're stunting it or you're making it dependent on on uh external circumstances and that that's going to expose you that's going to make you vulnerable you know so i think that is a warning that is relevant to every person even if they are um even if they are not like on in danger of being a russia like i'll give you an example let's say like in um in you know teaching like one of the um like one of the rookie mistakes that that um that teachers uh, that new teachers make is investing all of their self-esteem in whether a particular lesson goes well uh you know initially uh and and you know it's very hard not to but like you put all of your ego into that um and if you do that first of all you're going to end up making bad decisions in terms of like you know you're going to end up let's say like catering to you know, are, are the students going to like me, you know, or like, am I going to, um, uh, I don't know, like, like, I don't know, you, you, you're going to end up like, like limiting the scope of what you're doing. Whereas, whereas if you are more focused on what is objectively like good for the students, you know, then you're not going to be as, you know, subject to, um like uh, joy and pain based on whether they 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 you know they like the lesson or not you know um i'm i'm not expressing myself well maybe this is not a good example i'm just trying to bring an example from my own uh, my own realm i mean i'm sure this is a uh, you know in in very volatile uh enterprises where you can make like a lot of money in a short amount of time then i th i'm sure that the lure of wanting to get rich or to be credited with making a smart decision, that's another form of like ego-driven thinking that can easily cause you to make bad decisions that can undermine your success, you know? Um, and uh, that, that's not going to be good as well. So, but the point I'm trying to make though is that, that this is not just about people who are actually Rashaim. This is saying, look at how the Russia thinks and how it limits him. We are all prone to that. And also people who are not anywhere near the realm of being a tzaddik, but are just people with minds. I think this is this is saying why you should like invest in strengthening your mind and using your mind because it's only going to be uh you know to your to your uh, to your benefit. And if you combine that with Rabbi Yonah, you know, you even get like the ability to like um rejoice in afflictions. Okay, difficult puzzle, but uh we got we got at least something, if not more than one thing. Okay, stop here for tonight and uh Blee Netter continue next week. All right, thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I like these examples at the end, by the way. Okay, good. I good. I, yeah, yeah. If there's more examples that you can add to the chat, then then please do, because like uh uh I feel like they weren't the most resonant examples for everybody, but you know, something there. All right, see ya.